Welcome back to my channel, it's Ronnie Marcos. Thank you so very much for tuning in. And if you're new to my channel, please do me that favor and press that subscribe button. So today it's going to be a very quick one, but I wanted to do this live so that you guys can see Famara and also Madhu. And thank you so much, Hala TV, for being part of this as well. So I truly appreciate you being part of this interview as well. Thank you so much for your support. So, um, Famara, where are you? I'm back. Yeah, I'm just okay. I'm just Perfect. Yeah. So I know that you can't speak English fluently. So that's why you've got your cousin, yes. Madhu. So I so I will be speaking English so that my audience can actually understand me. But whenever I say something, Madhu will also translate. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Okay. Born in Bunju, born legally. The time his dad passed away, you know, by that time he's very young. So his mom lived in Bunju, come and stay in Tanya. You know, long time still now. She was in Tanya. So his mom passed away in son on Sunday, but later we see the body on Wednesday. You know, that's the time I take him there, bring him in Joshua. Okay. So he's currently wow. staying in this one right now and not in um yeah right. yeah right now he's in old Joshua. one. Okay. So how old is Farmara then? Um right now he's um about all fifteen years. He's fifteen. Okay. So yeah. I just want to let my viewers know that this day in Gambia, so um, the lightning is not that perfect because it's nighttime there. So that's why they can't see you guys properly. So yeah, that's the problem we have here. Number one, Morgan, yeah. Yeah. So we can you please hold on? Let me transfer to another light. Okay. I think this light is better than that one. I think this one is better. Yes, yes. way better. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so now we are here now. now. She's in fifteen years. So is Farmer going to school? Sorry, I don't get it. Is Farmer going to school? Hello. No, Munenda Yang is school. No, she's not going to school. And what's the reason why is um why he's not going to school? No, she's not going to school right now. And what's the reason? Can he explain? I'm getting you. Okay, I'm not going to explain. I have a stress. Yeah, what he's saying is have a stress because at this time he cannot even try to go to school because I'm, you know, the situation him mom passed away is very difficult and he's very sad. It's not easy at all. So that feeling he still get the pain in his heart. I understand that and all of us are really sorry about what he's going through. But has he been going to school before his mom passed away? Yeah, in last three years, four, three years, he was going to school, but later he did the school. So um, at the age of, let's say, 11, round about 11, 12, that's when he stopped going to school. Yeah. And what's the reason? Um, There was no support and 
He's very stubborn too. <laughs> that was okay. So there was no support. When you said there was no support. So when you say there was no support, you know, what do you mean? Mom normally, you know, there's the work cannot normally go every time well. You know, today you can work well, tomorrow there's no work, you know, and then His mom. When the boat went to fishing, after they are coming back, the mom normally cook lunch for the guys who normally went for fishing. So when they don't go fishing, he will not work. Okay, so farmer now goes for fishing. Yeah. Okay, so when did he start going fishing? And does the boat belong to Farmara or is he working for someone? Um, he started going fishing, let's say last year, early last year. Early last year. So that's how he basically helped himself and also his mom. Yeah, he, that's it. Okay, so can can Farmara tell us a little bit about his mom, please? So what is saying right now? He said that his mom, his boy, health, and you know, he's always working hard how to get some money to survive. She don't involved with no one problem. She don't find no one problem. You know, all what he's doing, he's trying to fight for himself, you know, to get something what he make him to survive. So all that money she have, he was trying to keep it at the shopkeeper for her to save the money for him. But later so, so that's what he's explaining like this the his mom normally take the money he get for the sea to save it to the shop so the day his mom need the money he went to the shop and asked the shopkeeper i need the money so before that the shopkeeper normally tells and told him so later the mom asks him, I need my money immediately. So that's the time at the evening, around five o'clock. That's the time the shopkeeper told him that, so now we can go and let me give you your money. That's the time he followed him. By that time, whether the guys do his agreement or something else, nobody knows. Because by that time, there is only two of them. Yeah. But um, the mom is very good woman and you know he's always trying for himself. She don't depend on nobody. It's heartbreaking to hear this. So okay, it's like the network is gone. Okay, I'll just speak to you, Hala TV, till they basically come back. Hopefully they'll be back soon. When you had the story, what was running through your mind? I mean, I was, I felt uh, very devastated and uh, knowing where I come from, the Gambia, which is a very peaceful country. Um, hearing about homicide is something unheard of. We know we do have petty crimes like uh, pickpocketing, burglary, robbery, breaking and entering. But for somebody to kill somebody in the Gambia is almost unheard of. So it is not surprising that we have such a uh, outpour of frustration from Gambians who are based especially in the village of Tanje itself. And we've seen since 2016 that crime is on the increase in the Gambia. And we as a country, we should do something about it. And I'm very happy that when I saw your video, I uh, watched the entire video. You were very emotional and you had, you had every reason to be emotional 
I think every genuine Gambian should be emotional about it. And for people like us who have a platform, I think we should talk about this rising crime rate in the Gambia. And I'm happy that uh, you started the conversation and I hope many people will join so that we can talk among ourselves and then make sure that we hold the government responsible. We hold our police departments responsible because what you have explained in your video and in that of a uh, Gambia talent, uh, I think the police could have done a better job wow. in protecting lives and properties in the Gambia. I'm very, so I'm very sorry, I was out of credit. No, it's okay, we understand, that's not a problem. So on Sunday evening, the guys come at home, call the farmer's mom, say that let's go, let me give me, let me give you your money. So that's the sister followed her like that on Sunday evening around five o'clock. So since she went out on Sunday, she don't even come back. So that night, people are looking around to know what is going on, but nobody can find him at that time. The following day, Monday, I leave just one, went to Tanje, you know, just to round there all the place, but I can even find it. On Tuesday, the same thing. Literally on Sunday, we just try and keep the boy, get the boy. So that's the time he explained everything, how they kill, how did she kill the mom, and where did she place it around the bus there yeah, at Tanya. So then he finally confirmed that he was the one that killed Farmer's mom, Ali Matu. Yep, yep, he confirmed that on Wednesday. Okay, so what decision has been taken then with this guy that has actually done this? What is the police doing? What's the government doing? Have you guys had anything? Sorry, guys. Yeah, so, my credit is nigga. I'm using credit. He's not a wife. I absolutely understand. Okay. So, um, because your credit is actually... Um, okay. So, because you've actually got a PayPal account, I'm just going to go ahead and let people know that they can support Farmara on his PayPal account for now, but he will be setting a GoFundMe as well. So Farmara, can you tell us quickly, because I know that you guys are short of credit, can you tell us quickly what help you would actually need from us, the diaspora, so that we know how we can help you now that you've got, um, now that you haven't got your mom with you or your dad, so you're basically all alone, apart from the family that you've got. We would also love to support you because we don't want you to feel like you're actually left alone because you're not. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. 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 <laughs> it's not easy at all. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. So, so, um, um, what you them, just say what you need. Yeah. Um, actually, right now, we really need a help because um, the mom was trying her level best. He even by a line in Joe's one where I was trying to build a house, but, you know, still now it's not yet done. So he's the one who was sponsoring, giving me the money for me to build the house. But literally, this coronavirus come, everything has stopped. You know, there's no work in Africa. Everything not going well. So we are still trying to see how we're going to survive but still now things are not going well. So however we get the help, we can thank you Allah and thank you people also. Whatever you decide, oh, how are we going to get it? So does Farmer want to go back to school? He said no. Okay, yeah. and what? What's his reason? My reason. My reason. Not a bull or dead one still. I know I can speak. Tell me, Munma, Munma, 
like he said that he feel the way his mom passed away you know he don't feel like going to school like that you know seeing some people come into school with their moms or their parents why he be there alone you know it's not easy at all he kind of support that i absolutely understand so because the mom started this building project to basically build a home so how how much do you think you guys actually need just an estimate how much so that when you guys create the gofundme people know how they can support you how much do you actually think will actually help you to complete that house and also um for farmer to basically maybe he might want to have his own fishing boat rather than being employed so that he can basically you can support him because farmer is still young he's only 15 so you can actually supervise him to basically have his own fishing boat so how much um, how much does it cost to build a boat and how much do you think it will basically cost to finish off that house that the mom started um, actually, right now, I don't have any experience on about um, boat to build it all, to buy the engine and the nets, everything on it. I have to sit with some people, let me ask them, and they told me the amount of the money. But what I was thinking is that, you know, to try, let me try and create a car for her, like this tourist car. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, yeah? It's all right, brother. It's okay. Like, don't have to apologize when she try on his feature like example when she have the three hundred thousand, maybe he can try a car for her to survive with the car maybe the car can bring other things but for the house i think when we have two hundred and fifty thousand, can we complete the house so two hundred thousand for a tourist taxi did you say three three hundred thousand so that's round about three thousand dollars is that right Hala tv no, um, three thousand dollars. Um, that is going to be about six thousand dollars because a thousand, yeah, a thousand dollars is fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so six thousand dollars, and also he did mention, um, three hundred and fifty thousand that might be able to finish the house as well. Yeah, yes, that's that's another um seven thousand dollars. So all together, six and seven, that's going to be, uh, thirteen thousand altogether. That's Okay, yeah. I need to note this down so that I can remember. 13,000. Yes. But I think um, from my own point of view, it's going to be very important for the young man to go back to school. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go back to the regular school, but it's important for him to learn a trade because this is the only way that you can sustain yourself. He has to look at what kind of trade that he wants to learn and make sure he learn that craft and then master it. Because whatever you're doing, you could buy a car and then start driving, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. But whatever you have in here is going to stay with you for the rest of your life. So learning a skill, either carpentry, masonry, uh, tailoring, whatever it is, mechanics, whatever it is, you know, it is important for him to learn that he should not feel that it is too late. He is 15, he is still young, he can still go back and then learn a trade, a skill that will help him in the future. And as, as what I'm, I don't know whether you are the uncle or you are a friend of the family, you at least I'm have... Half, have a, I'm half brother. Okay. So I think you have a, a big responsibility on your shoulder. You have to show him the way, you have to mentor him, you have to guide him. He is going to need your help, and I think you know. Uh, yeah, been a long time. He already take this decision, saying that he will not going back to school. And he normally told me that we don't have to lose our money on school because she don't feel like going back to school. Okay, so what type of trade does he want to learn? So if he doesn't want to go to school, it doesn't specifically means that he can go back into like a proper education where he will sit and take a pet a book and a pen to write but maybe to learn a trade that he can basically um look into as a career in the future so because 
a tourist taxi, okay, that will help him for now, but that's not going to help him in the long run. So does is there anything that he has always wanted to do in life, always wanted to be when he grows up? What was it that has always been his passion? So what he's saying, like, she don't need any other work, only fishing, that's what he needs. But by this time, he's too young to take a boat to the ozone like this. Okay, okay. I mean, that's another trade right there. I mean, fishing you know, is a trade. It's not and, uh, easy at all because um, before I normally went fishing, but it's not easy. By this time, this boy take a boat here, went to the ozone, and that's not safe at all because you normally have few people in the boat, you know, who normally supports you. So when do you not have that? The boat will be staying here also, not going. Then you build the boat for nothing. I absolutely understand that. So I know that he's still young, so he still has time anyways to think about what he wants um, to basically yeah. do in the long run. But as his cousin, what do you think, what type of trade do you think would be actually good for him? What do you think, apart from tourist taxi? Because we want to help, but in order for us to help, we want to know what we can help him with. And what exactly he wants to do? Does he want to get into carpentry? Like, what exactly does he want to do? On my so like super say you come get come get go over there. You come into our land, mass on our land, fishing on. Man, you come get go over there. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, super say you. Then you come get. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. My opinion was. For her to go back to school, but really he refused to go back to school. And then when you force him to go to school, whether he's gonna reach at the school or not, you will not know. When she leaves the house, whether he's going to school or not, I will not know nothing about it. But actually, what I need, what I prefer right now is just that for to find the taxi and maybe he can manage with that and that can support him too. Okay. Okay, but um, currently, what is the status of the case? Uh, what is exactly happened to the, the guy who killed his mom? Yeah, no. Okay, no. Yeah, the guy who killed the mom was a shopkeeper in the same house with the mom. So the boy normally went fishing and take the money, give it to. The mom, so the mom can hand over the money for the shopkeeper because she don't want to keep the money inside the, his house because he's always losing their money. People stealing money in his house, so that's the reason why he take the money out and give it to the shopkeeper so then there will be more secure. Yes, but my question so, is, the, where is the man himself at the moment as we're speaking? Where is the man? The man is at the station right now. He's with the police. Do you yeah, know? Do you know exactly what the next steps are? What are the police doing? What are they trying to do with this matter? Um, right now we don't try to confirm that because we are was trying to take care about the dead, the dead body, to bear it. So all these days, that's what we are was doing, and we're done with that today around two o'clock. Okay. So, so around, around two o'clock, I was trying to do that. Also, my uncle took a motorbike just to buy the colonel for we to see at each other. You know, on his way coming back, he have an accident on the way. You right now, he's on me a picture. Let me see if I can show people the picture that you shared with me with the uncle. Yeah, yeah, I sent it to you. I think. I'm just gonna try and see if I can show. My viewers, the uncle had a is it a motorbike accident? Oh, yes, 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 that's really bad. Can you guys see? Yes. yes, so this is the problem because we buried the mom already on his way going to buy the colonel and coming back. 
we have an accident. So, you know, we have another problem too because this is very serious. So I was in the hospital. That's why I told you, can we try and do, do it in next four hours? Because the time you was calling me, by that time I was at the hospital, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. literally they transfer us to Banjo. But also as a family, what exactly do you want the government to do about this case? No, right now on our family was trying that like as far as the boy killed our mom already. So he don't have to be alive anymore. He has to dare to. And what, what are the authorities saying about this? They don't give us any answer because on Wednesday, we I was there at the station trying to get the boy for we to kill him, but they don't appreciate to hand over the boy for us because of the law is not. This is the only time I miss Jamme, the former president, because yes. he never used to take non any nonsense like this. The security no. of the country, no matter what on he used to do, but the country's security was his priority. And whoever kills, he will kill you. And I don't That's care what way. people say out there. You don't take my loved one's life and expecting that I will basically be happy for you to be locked up while I pay my tax, they feed you in that prison. Hell no. You kill, I kill you, or they really? kill you. Really? That's how it should be. And I like, think really, that death penalty really, should come really back. We really want the... Okay, we really um, want that the government take this step on this because it's not easy at all to kill someone who part of you like this. And, you know, they normally do it on police case. The boy will be on the station two days, three days, or oh, one month, one year. They try to leave him so then you can meet the boy at the street like this. He starts saying that I'm the one who killed the person. And that's not right. When somebody kills a person, let him dead like that. Okay. Person. Um, that's yeah. the right. This is uh, my appeal to the family. Gambia is a, a country of laws. Uh, as of now, as of now, I think the family should try to pro uh, follow the due process of the law. Now that the murderer is arrested, they will arraign him before a court of law and then the due process will take place. At the end of the day, if he is found guilty, they will sentence him maybe life imprisonment. I have a different take when it comes to death penalty. I don't think, I don't necessarily believe in that. But I also think recklessly or deliberately taking somebody's life, like in the case of this young man, he already lost his father. Here he is, he lost his mother. I think the government, there is a problem in our system and we have to try and fix those things because Crime is as a result of societal problems. And I think we will take this opportunity to talk about some of those problems. And what do we think the government can do to protect citizens in that country? And if I understand very right, is it that uh, this man is an immigrant from Guinea or is he a Gambian? Yeah, that said that his family come from Kazamas. Because right now, nobody on his family around. So the time we are knowing that guy, we know him on that house, on that shop. He never traveled. He never told us he's going somewhere else. And we don't know nobody about his family. I Actually, also... right now, what we're going to do, because literally, we know that we cannot put our own law. But the, all what the government will do, let him try and help us to this case not to be fully, fully scared. Because this man killed the lady. He did something bad. And at the end, he killed him. The money went up to 270000 for her to pay the money he can. When she called the lady and tell him that I use your money, but you can just give me some time. When I get it, I will try to pay you. One can understand that. But you don't pay the money, and at the end you kill the guy. You know that's too bad. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is very disheartening. It is very bad, and uh, 
I don't think anybody can fully apprehend exactly what your family is going through. But all we can do is to um, sympathize with you, try to help you in the best way by, possible. By and, and, I, and I hope that um, the viewers who are watching this program or anytime this is uploaded, they will come on board to help. Like Rene said, the, the PayPal account is already up there. And you, we as of now, we have an idea as to how much is needed between 13,000 to 15,000 US dollars. We'll be able to help the young man to finish building the house and also be able to buy a taxi so that he can start uh, using it to support himself financially. And anyone watching, please, please go ahead and then um, donate to this um, course. We feel so bad because what are we going to appeal to the government? Let them try and help us because people are then in Gambia too much. We feel the pain truly, truly. But some people are there too. They are feeling the pain because on that day, all Chinese comes out. All Chinese, nobody left. We come to the highway, attack the station, do there something bad. And when you see that people have something feel something bad in their hearts you know so the government have to take that step let this thing stop immediately people are dying in gambia like shit and that's not right we don't know what is this we don't even experience this at jambia's time you never you don't even mad to kill someone so what we're going to appeal on bawa he's our president and we give him full respect and we know that he's our president but let him try and take that step to help us, please. We are so tired of this. Thank you very much for that beautiful message. So I'm going to go back to Famara because I'm very worried about him. I know that he doesn't want to get into any education for now because of what he's going through. I absolutely understand. So Famara, if I were you, I would take all the time that you need to basically heal. If it's going to take you a whole year, please take it. Because I know you're young. It's going to be hard. I'm sure your mom was your best friend. She was your everything. You were working so hard to also make sure that she was okay and she was happy. Because I know as a Gambian, being a son, being the only man, you would want to be the man of the house and make your mom proud. I know that for sure. But guess what? You can still do that. With, without your mom being around. Wherever she is, she will know that you can do it. And the only way for you to make her proud is to go back into education. Because I know 100%, if she had the power, the money, the support, she would have definitely wanted you to go to school, at least to finish high school. I know that for sure. Every proud parent would want to see their child going to school every single day. So if you can do that for me and for your mom, for the love that you had for your mom, take all the time that you need. We will support you fully. I, Renee, Marcos, I will support you financially fully for you to go back to school whenever you're ready to go back to school. So like, when I come to my husband, I'm going to my husband, I'm the taxi that you want, the Tommy taxi, we can do the GoFundMe and try and raise that up for you. And you can still do the, the, the tourist taxi that you want to do. That's not a problem. Even if you want to open a YouTube account to basically show people what you will be doing so that people can basically know what you are basically up to, what you're doing, the support that you need, so that we can encourage you, give you that motivation, give you that love and support. We will be there for you if you want to open that YouTube account so that people will actually know what you're up to so that you wouldn't feel like, oh, you've been left alone. So all of this support will be given to you. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. So you say you get the 
na hapo am community ni kuone kadi kwa kuone kadi kwa tangin kwa community ni kuna kitu ni ya hapo kwenye contact na huwa ni negative problem na mimi kwa kitu kingine ni gisa la hamanteni kwa mimi mmoja mmoja kwa sababu ya hapo na dawa ni linga mbari kadi ni ndefe ni kwani kwa kare kwa Mike, what is saying is that that's the only things you need because going back to school, she don't think about it, is it? That's absolutely fine. Right now, he may think that, oh, education is not the best thing for him right now. It may be, well, it may yeah. not be, but right now, that's absolutely fine. He can take all the time that he needs. But whenever he feels like, okay, I'm ready to actually learn a trade, he knows mm -hmm. where to find me. He knows where to find us, and we will always be here for him. Inshallah. Okay. Okay. He say he okay with that. Never mind. No problem. Okay. Yeah, that's it's the same. No problem on that. He can try and think about it also. That's not a problem. And I heard that some people are having issues with the um, paper link. It's also in my description box. So you guys can just copy and paste it as well. So I've got the link in the description box. So, um, Madhu, do you have anything else you have to say uh, before I let you guys go? Because I know that you guys are short of credit, so I don't want you guys to basically yeah. finish your credit and yeah, then that's all. finish up with the live. Well, I'm already using four hundred dollars a credit. Definitely, we will pay you back your four hundred dollars a credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is like right now what is in our heart really we are the only one know what we are feeling right now because the one we lose she's always supporting the family always supporting everybody you know especially her mom is always supporting everybody and everybody cry, cry about her so then we lose it already so what left here oh, for me to pray for her and ya Allah give him what he want but for yeah. right now his son is here. I'm her brother, you know. So whatever you guys can help to support us, we can still try and manage with that. Because right now, we are even renting, trying to build that house to complete, so then we can move there. That's why we have opportunity on this video. And thanking each and everyone, especially you, try to create this thing. Uh, thanking you. Thank you for very much, because this is a our big opportunity, you know, to get what we want. That's not a problem. You're welcome. So people are already asking whether the GoFundMe has been created. No, it has not been created because I wanted to know how much exactly Farmara would need. So let's say around about um, thirteen to $15,000. Um, that's what they've mentioned that that would basically start them off by finishing, uh, basically to complete their home. So, and also for Farmara to um, have his own tourist taxi as well, which would be helping him financially. So I've also um, given them the option to start a YouTube channel, which I'll promote their channel as well. And also ask you guys to go and subscribe to their channel once they actually set it up. But it's entirely up to Farmara whether he will be able to actually do that. Because having a YouTube channel, once it starts growing, it's a big platform, <coughs> big thing for you. Um, a young child to basically carry so it's entirely up to him madu can support him with that but i will speak to them personally um in regards to the youtube channel so that you guys can have an up-to-date information about farmer and also madu so that we know where they're up to and what help they exactly need as well so thank you so very much farmer for accepting this interview i truly appreciate it and also madu as well yeah. So um, I've also got a brother, which is yeah. Richard Nosise. Yeah, Rene, before they go, um, if they have maybe, do you think if they have any direct number that people can reach out to them for those who want to reach out? Can they oh, just yeah. know? 
I've actually right. got their telephone number. I've got Madders because um, Farmara doesn't have a, um, a mobile number, but Madu does. No, He's got a WhatsApp no. number, which is also in the description box. So people can reach out directly to them. They don't have to get through to me, but they can speak to them directly and um, basically discuss whatever they want to discuss with them. Yes, it is in the description box. Um, before they go, because I've got Chana Sisi, so I'm not sure whether he has a message for them. That's why I just want him to speak before Fama, uh, Famara leaves. Uh, oh, oh, okay, greetings to everyone watching. And mm -hmm. greeting to, uh, greetings to Mfamara, Rain, and my brother from America. I'm greeting all of you. Uh, I, am, I am from Tanji. So what is happening in Tanji shouldn't be happen or should not happen because we are having all the security forces in Tanji. I don't know why such things are happening in our village and we have them there doing what they if anything happens to our people if you call them they will tell you to go and find taxis for you uh, for them so that they can go and trust anything which happens in our village i think the government have to do something because you cannot have uh, security people in, in a village where everybody comes to the village. You understand, our village is a business center and there is every national tease uh, in, our, in, in our village, especially uh, 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 where in the area I am living. So why are they not supporting the security people to do their mm, mm, nightly patrol or daily patrol in the village because the women are complaining when they leave um, uh, the village or, or sorry where the fishing area going home sometimes they will get attacked by people and they have informed that to the security people to come and help them but nobody is a uh, uh, stands for them they are really suffering they have they need a help they have to help them because uh, you, ca you you cannot you cannot um, be in a village where you have um, 13 nationalities living there all of them are coming to that beach and nobody knows where they come from or where they are going so the cr petty crimes are too much there they need to help us this cannot continue and it is not fair that our mothers and sisters are dying innocently without the help of the government. Absolutely. Th th thank you um, very, very much, my brother. And I, I think this is how I, I see this. Sorry, sorry. It I want allow, allow, allow me, allow me, allow me, because uh, the sister is living in my uncle's home. I knew her. You understand? So she is a hardworking woman. It is not fair what they did to her. I really feel it and I condemn it. They have to help us. We are known, oh you know, Gambians are known of our, our peacefulness, we are tolerant, but we cannot accept this, that people will come and kill our people and they go like that. It is not fair. Yeah, that, it's not fair at all. The, the fact, the family need all the support from the village, from the government, from anybody. Because you, you, now the boy is, is an orphan without a father, without a mother. And what is the future of him? Absolutely. Please. If, so uh, the, 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 uh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. And this is the first time for me to join both of you, your life. You understand? Uh, I, I cannot express uh, the sadness I have when I heard this. So please, uh, I know that I will also do my contribution. Uh, I will help all what I can. Okay, my brother, so um, I'm very sorry. Do you know the nationality of the mother? 
Yes, the mother, his nationality, he's a Senegalese. <coughs> he's from yes, Senegal. He's from, ba he's, he's, he's from Basul. Basul. And um, if I am right, uh, I'm made to understand that there is a lot of um, crime being perpetrated by people coming from within our sub region. Can you tell us something about that? What is your knowledge when it comes to uh, um, these crimes taking place in Tanje village itself? Is it the Gambians who are committing these crimes against Gambians or is it that these are crimes being committed against Gambians by other people? The crime, the, most of the crimes are committed by non-Gambians. You, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. So re re recently, recently, two weeks back, you understand, we heard that the same place they buried this, 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 this hardworking woman, you understand, uh, there's still, there's uh, another suspect that they have found a man, you understand, they throw him in a well there two weeks back, and nobody knows who killed that person. That one is also on uh, in, uh, under in investigation. So how, when when is this thing going to stop in 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 Tanje? Tanje oh. was a very peaceful village, and everybody want to live there. Everybody want to come there. We accommodate everybody in that village. So our Alcalo and the VDC and the youths, they have to do something to stop this. If the, if the government don't want to do anything, we will mobilize our youth, you understand? We are going to secure our own village if they don't want to do anything. Because our, our sisters, you understand, they are doing everything to take food, to bring food into their home. You understand? Our mothers, they are struggling every day so that their children can have something you understand, can go to school or can have something to eat. So an innocent woman who is struggling every day and night for, for, for the betterment of his young, <coughs> your, your young boy, you, have, you, you don't have any empathy in you. You just go and kill that person for no reason, because of asking her own money. Okay. It's, 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 okay. My I absolutely understand your frustration. My other question. I absolutely understand. Yes, go ahead, Lama. My other question for you is: um, We know that these immigrants who are living in your village, they are renting in homes that belongs to Gambians. And as a village, as a people, I think it is high time for you to make sure that you get a head count of everybody who lives in the village to know exactly who are living there and where they are from. Because if these atrocious crimes are being committed against the citizens of your village and it is not, it's, it's committed by immigrants, we need to know who they are, where do they live. And the government also need to you know, ha have a track of them. That way, if a crime is committed, we mm -hmm. can easily know how to get them and then how to you know make sure that yeah. Just just to basically support what you've just said there, isn't that the role of the Alcalo to actually do Sorry. as the chief of the village? Yes, but, yes, but, but is, we, have, we have the immigrations there. That is the job yes. of the immigration. They yes. are there. Then yes. we have the police there. We have the navies there. And we have the army barrack there. You understand? So I, 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 I cannot <coughs> understand because when this scene happened, uh, what, what, what I was told is that they first went to inform the police about it, but they don't have any vehicle to even accompany the, the, the youth to go and no. look or search for the body of the woman. How can, how can, how can that be possible? And, and brother, I, I truly... Have Yes, I truly agree with you yes. because the residents of Tanje, they pay property tax, they pay business tax. So therefore, the tax money that the government is collecting from the people of Tanje should be plowed back into the community. And the number one responsibility that the government can do for the people of Tanje is to make sure that the people are secure in their homes and in their personhood. Because for me, I don't understand how can you have an entire police station without a car? 
why would the police even ask the citizens to pay a town trip for them to do their job? That is not what we should do. We pay our tax to the government and then the, tax, the government has to be responsible. It is their primary responsibility to protect lives and properties of every Gambian. And in this instance, they have woefully failed in doing that. And we have to make sure we hold them responsible because I believe that there is a st structural problem within our law enforcement in the Gambia. Our police are not proactive. They are reactive. They wait for crime to happen for them to you know, even try to you know, do something. What even at that, people have to basically cry and basically protest before they actually do anything. Um, I'm not cutting you off, but because I've got, I've, I've still got farmer on the line, and I basically just want to let them go because of their credit. Um, Madhu and Farmer, thank you so much for being here today. All I want to assure you guys is that this has happened. Um, there's no way that we can actually bring your mom back, but what we can actually do. Um, in the diaspora, it's fight for peace and justice to basically reign in our country so that this disgusting um, thing that has actually happened in the country will repeat itself again. And we will do our best to support you. And I've got one of my subscribers who've actually asked if we actually assist you with um, getting a tourist taxi, who would be driving this taxi? Would it be Farmara or Madhu or someone else? Yeah, by this time, Farmer is too young to drive that taxi. So would it be but you yourself? I, yeah, myself, or to find one driver for her. So just to try when it's the age to find an ID card, or to create a bank account for her. So <coughs> any money the car bring, he put it on his account. Okay, perfect. Because people just wanted to understand. And I keep getting people asking, when would the um, GoFundMe be created? I will do my best to create it tonight and basically post it on my platform and try and also get them a YouTube channel. That's if they're happy to have one. And so that they can basically start um, moving on with life and basically finish off the project that the mom started. Because from my understanding, M Madhu has actually explained that um, the mom was working so hard with Farmara to basically finish off the building, um, the the project that they started, which was building a small house for them to move in because they were actually renting. But unfortunately, something happened. The mom is no longer here and Madri is all by himself, just like Chavna also mentioned that he's an orphan. He's basically got no support. So he basically need all our love, support, Basically, anything that we can actually help him with, please, let's just do it for him. So I will definitely create the GoFundMe and um, every information will be passed on to Madhu. Madhu will be handling the account on behalf of um, Farmara and then hopefully everything will basically carry on as normal. The mom is not here anymore. They started to build the house, but as a family, we will finish it off for them. And wherever the mom is, I'm sure she'll be very happy knowing that the house is completed. And the money that the mom was actually saving, I'm guessing they've lost that money. There's no way they will basically get that money back from the guy. Okay, so is there anything else, um, Madhu, you may want to add before I let you guys go so that Ngamuna saves the credit bit? <laughs> Oh, no, man, just to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for welcoming me or texting me to join this, you know, come on, I don't have nothing to say, just to thank you, may Allah pay you, and my other brother, I thank you too, and my dear uncle to live in Tanye, I will try to thank you, whatever you said is true, so let the government try and help us very well just to give the security their materials whatever that whatever <coughs> comes around so then they will have a car to go and patrol and do everything on sunday we went to this person and allowed them inform them that the mom has dismissed we don't even see him we're still looking around but nobody get up and go around and look at three days we are patrolling looking and they say that they are a serviceman that's not fair and it's not right 
So let the government try and do our level best to give them more cars. So whatever happens, they will try and go around, look what's going on. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. And thank you for your time as well. So once I'm done with the live, I'll definitely give you guys a call and um, we can take it from there. Okay. Inshallah. Never mind. All right then. Thank you very you much. Take care. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care and take heart. Inshallah. Okay, um, <laughs> Uh, I know you, you, you people may know me. Uh, I am from Sisekunda. Kunda. Yeah, yeah Sisa, uh, I'm his fourth son. You people know me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you. Things you know you very well. I know you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Accept my sympathy you, and we really feel uh, what uh, very bad what have happened to you and it can happen to anybody living in Tanji. So and we need protection. Well, yeah. We need protection. Yeah. This cannot continue. You you understand? Because, because the, in, because in ten day alone, the taxi the tax mm, money they are collecting in ten day is too much. Only that money can do mm. everything for our village. We don't need any help from the government if the phones are uh, uh, well 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 uh, secured and uh, put into put. Uh, uh, into a good use, the, the more we have in uh, Tanje uh, fishing village, the taxpayers' money can even do anything with the security people need in Tanje. So they have to look uh, because... into that. You understand? But um, I think this yeah, is yeah, why we I... really understand what you are saying because already we lose our mom already, but. All what we are saying for the government, for the rest of the people in Tanje, for them to be comfortable. Because right now, when you are working at night, even daytime, you cannot even be comfortable. So always you can think something can happen to me. So we already lose our mom. We know it's very hard and we don't want this kind of things happen again. So let the government try and save the people in Tanje and make them to feel comfortable. <coughs> I would like to thank people of Tanje everyone each and everyone not girls not men young or elder everyone because we see how they stand how they face us how they help us since on sunday we are trying they support us they do everything we live in just one but whatever they can try they try it in tanya anything they call us so i would like to thank them so very much let them keep it up it's just like that just die for your country Absolutely. Thank you. And Maju, one of my subscribers just asked, why wasn't Alimatu saving her money in the bank instead of giving it to um, a shopkeeper? Do you have any idea why she was doing yeah. that? Yeah, that's the problem because I'm, I was even telling her to try to create a bank account, but I don't know why she don't. She normally saves his money, the shopkeepers. You know, so even this year, I went there to tell him that stop giving people your money because it's not safe. Don't trust nobody right now because whoever you trust, he normally did something bad to you. So why should I create the bank account? Because literally he called me, he called me and tell me that I will try and create it. But right now, for me to have a ID card, it will be very difficult because you know, the election is coming by next year. For you to have an ID card on this time, it's going to be difficult. Okay. So do you think a lot of these women that work in Tanjay actually save their money with um, friends and family and not keep it in the bank? Um, I don't because have any like experience or any idea on that. But I think some I of them are saving their money in the bank. Okay, because because what they I were going like to take do, example of this. Can I, can I just, in that? Just, just one minute, let me just finish off because I really want to understand um, the reason why people don't like to save their money in the bank. I'm not sure whether it has to do with lack of knowledge or education or they just don't know uh, whether their money will be safe or not because they don't see the person that they're giving their money to or I really don't know. 
So one thing I would like to do once I'm in the Gambia, it's actually go in Tanje and other parts in the Gambia to educate this woman how important it is to save their money in the bank because it will save them a whole lot of hassle as well. And I think from what has happened to Halima too, this should basically educate a lot of these women to basically save save their money somewhere safe that they know 100% wherever they whenever they need the money the money will always be there and they will sleep at night knowing that their money is safe so i would definitely look into this so that we stop this what, what, from happening for women to stop saving their money with others no, but, but but most of them are doing that now most of them have started saving their monies in the bank but because we even have a bank in the in, 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 at the beach there most of okay. them are saving their money there it's just it's not, it's not that the woman have over trust this this shopkeeper she never think that uh, the it. shopkeeper will do this to her that's why she's i don't know saving her money uh, because they, 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 you you have the the the, the 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 room or the how uh, the room the room of the 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 the, 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 the woman and you have the uh, the the shopkeeper near 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 her so they, they have been living together for seven good years so that connection and trust is between them absolutely so, i understand that but when it what, comes what, to money you about? trust no one absolutely no one not your child, not your husband, not your wife, no one whatsoever. Money is evil and money is basically the devil. Money can basically cause anything. So when it comes to money, trust no one but the bank. And you don't need to tell no one what you have. Absolutely. Just to avoid these crazy actions happening. Okay. I have a question. For like the way my uncle, my dad uncle say it, like she never think these guys will do something bad like this to her. Because he even normally do it when she cook, he can even give him to eat. So with all that, you know, there's a trustness and something what you don't expect. But what you say also is true. When money comes, don't trust no bad. Because Absolutely. anything can happen. What you don't expect. So Absolutely. I would like to say every woman in Tanje, let them take example from Alimatu sir. Take your money and save it to the bank. Don't trust nobody. Even part of your family, don't trust no one. Take your money to the bank and save it there so then you can feel comfortable and relax. Absolutely. You can be here trust someone. You can trust someone who you think he will never do something to you. And one day, maybe his mind will turn any time. Absolutely. Because yeah. whenever you see money, you cannot control yourself anymore. So you will try to do what you want to do. Because you are trying that many years, you don't get it. So one day you saw that money on front of you, that's an opportunity to you. Mm -hmm. So when do, you don't believe oh, yeah, Allah, you will try and do something, what will bring problem after? So the women of Tanya, let them try and save it. Oh, every woman, let them try and keep their money in the bank. It's more secure, it's more safe. I'm appealing to each and everyone, let them try and do that. Don't trust nobody to give him your money. You work your money for so hard. The time you normally wake up and go to the beach side is too cold and it's too early. So you try and sacrifice that just to stop your sleepness. Cut it, wake up early in the morning, Go to the beach side, work there for so hard, get that money, give it to someone for her to keep it for you. That guy will say, This idiot don't need the money. Let me try and use it. So it's not easy at all. Let them try and the government to, to help us because it's not easy at all. Someone can do you something bad at the end, he come and did something bad to you. We lose our mom like this. And we really know who is that guy and where. His position on me. All time you are crying for this girl, for this lady, but we are thanking them too for their support. Thank you very much, each and everyone, and thank you for the video. Thank you for spending your time too on this video. No problem.
That's what we're here for. I think Halat TV has a question for you. Okay. Halat, are you there? Okay, I think he's gone. Uh, okay. Mm, the, uh, well, what I just want to say, and I'm appealing to the government, if they can hear us, let them help us, uh, or let them help uh, the servicemen who are living in Tangye with vehicles so that they can be uh, patrolling the whole village, both day and night, you understand, for the sake of our people. You know, gam uh, especially the women, they are doing everything, working hard. You understand? Then they need protection. If they close from work, going to their home, they should not be a harm. They should not be attacked. You understand? They should not be pickpocketed. That should not happen to them. They have to leave their home safely and go back to their home safely. That's the only thing we are asking from the government. Let them provide mobility for our security people who are living there to protect our people. That's what we need. That's what I'm appealing, so that the government can hear us and help us. Let, let them come to our aid and help our people. You understand? Because uh, uh, what happens to this woman, if it doesn't stop now, it can happen to anybody whether we like it or not. And we need a safe environment for our people. Please let them help us. Let them do everything to make sure that every citizen or everybody living in that village or the whole guy to be safe. Because yes. the thing is outrageous. It's, it's, it's happening now and then, and it should not happen. We should okay. not lose any woman because of his hard work this this is my contribution and this is what i am appealing to the government please let them come to our aid our aid and help help our women there is a lot of vulnerability towards them nobody protect them and nobody help them they are struggling every day and night you understand and they will they, they will wake up four o'clock three o'clock five o'clock to go to that beach, you understand, to get something for their children, you understand. So they have to come and help us. The security people living there, staying there, both day and night, they don't even have transport. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. But my brother, um, this is why earlier so, I, was, um, I was saying, I think uh, the VDC, the Alcalo and the VDC of Tanya, um, there is a work that you guys can do. Uh, out of this tragic incident, your village belongs to you. And you, you have a say as to how your village should be governed. You people are paying taxes to the government of the Gambia. Uh, consult your parliamentarian and make sure you also, because in the 21st century, the policing system has evolved. Now we have community policing. I don't know what is the relationship between the police officers at Tanje and the people of the community. But if there is a very good relationship, we don't, in the Gambia, our problem is we are having armchair or wheelchair police officers. They come, they do their eight hour shift, they stay at the station, they don't go around. The police officers, they should be present everywhere there is a public. They should be going to that uh, beach because there is a lot of money exchanging different hands. So the likelihood of crime happening at the seaside is very high. If the police you know, regularly patrol that place, that is going to you know, limit crime from taking place. But we don't expect our police officers to report to work, sit behind the chair, do their shift and finish and go home. That is not policing. They have to engage in society. Go and have daily patrols during day and nighttime and make sure they protect the people. And how best do you protect the people? You have to create that relationship because police are not angels. The best way they can do their job is if they have a good relationship with the people and also they need intelligence. And how do they get that intelligence? They have to get it from the community. 
So the police have to get out of their police stations, go out and meet with the people, know the community that they are serving, that way they can protect us. Because the policing system we have in the Gambia is a 19th century policing system. That traditional policing system no, no longer works and we have to change the entire system. So therefore, my appeal is, it's very good that we're having you here. Take it upon yourself, engage your Alcalo, engage the VDC, go to the police station and tell them, look, this is what we want. What is it that you need from us? We also know that our police departments are poorly funded. They don't get all the, the support that they need. You go to police stations, they have cars, even when, where they have, wherein they have cars, they don't have fuel. So there is a lot of problem in the Gambia when it comes to policing our community. And it is high time for us to start discussing these issues. Unless we talk about these issues, we cannot solve it. And if we don't solve it, more and more people will get hurt, more and more people will die in our country, and especially the women. Gender-based violence is on the increase. These women are working 24 hours every day. They're working very hard to sustain their families. While we, the men, are sitting at the woods, you know, drinking our affairs, <laughs> we are not protecting this, you know, uh, uh, this woman. In the case of this young man here, he, he lacks a father, he lacks a mother now. Who is going to support him? So it is, it, it is you know, crazy, it is insane. I, I, I yeah. Uh, 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 Halal, I, I understand what you are saying. One thing I can assure you, uh, the, the, the revenue which they collect at the big there, only one day can buy a vehicle for those security people because they collect a lot of revenue in Tangye. You understand? So with that money, they can do many things with that. Um, the, uh, where I am from, uh, my, my compound or my father's compound, at least there is more than 10, 10, 10 foreigners living there, but they are all Senegalese renting there. We have no problem with them. You understand what I'm telling you? We have no problem with them. But that doesn't mean that you understand we should fall our hands down saying that, you know, Gambia, no problem. You understand? So we would not do anything. Now things are happening. Then they have to do something now. They have to tighten the security. You understand? We, we are having a new... Uh, 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 a new VDC now, and they are doing well with the leadership of um, Ibrahim S. Jallo. You understand? They are doing a lot of, I don't know, changes in the village. But as we, uh, these things come uh, uh, with nobody, when nobody is expecting it, so the, the village boys have sworn their frustration, you understand, so that the government can know what is happening in Tangier. So this, this, this would be a collective, I don't know, work for everybody. Let us play our part. I will try my best to play my part too. You understand? I'm, I'm not living in Tangier at this. I'm in, I'm in Spain here. I'm in Spain here. So, but uh, I, uh, I, I am informed and I know many things which is happening in my, in my, in my environment and in my village. So uh, I'm very happy uh, to follow both of you. I have subscribed in all of you, your channels and I'm following you. So I really appreciate that you people bring this, this, this topic, you understand, in your platform to sensitize and inform people to know that you understand what is happening in our country, in our communities, in our village. You understand? I can tell you, uh, many, many accidents happen at that time <coughs> village because the truck, truck drivers, you understand, uh, um, masslessly drive, you understand, where the public is. Because if you know Tanje, you will know that the road have crossed, you understand, from, 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 from where the, the villagers come. Uh, to cross to the beach and where you understand the market is. So that place is always crowded. Yes. You understand? So uh, um, we, 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 we don't have any sleeping police there. 
we don't have anybody who is uh, regulating and stopping those uh, big trucks, you understand, to stop driving so fastly because they can attest to that. Many people have lost their, their life in, 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 in that cross. So if they don't help us, all of us are going to die there. So, Ren Marcos, thank you so much. I'm very pleased to um, do my little contribution. Uh, I hope the government will listen to us and they will come and help us and help all the Gambians, you understand, to protect us, you understand? So, if, 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 if the security people, yeah, they, they, uh, they really do their job, I think that these kind of things will not happen in our communities. You understand? It is their right because that's why they are there. The taxi payers' money is the one they are using to pay them. Then they should stop sitting down and do something. They even have to, you understand, involve. And uh, what you said, uh, Halal, you understand, to have that relationship with the VDC, with the people, and know their problems. But they know it more than anybody. They know it. Maybe they are reckless you understand, of uh, yeah. taking actions, you understand, if such things happen. Because this, this thing annoy me. In Europe here, yeah, you cannot go and complain or give your report to the police, and they will tell you that you people have to pay a taxi for us to go and uh, uh, follow the case. Yeah. Where does that happen? Yeah. Only in Gambia, only in Africa, Where because like you happen? said, you live in Spain, Rene lives in the UK, we see the police are always on the street 24 7 and this is what we need to do in the gambia we don't need our police officers just to report to work and then sit behind the chair or be sit behind the table sorry and then serve their shift and then go home what is the essence of us then paying them so i think the entire structure has to change the way our police are training the gambia they need better training on the 21st century policing techniques that is the only way we can protect our society. They have to make sure they have a very good rapport with the people because the, 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 uh, the authority that they have, they derive it from us. So if we don't understand what the role of the police are, if the police also don't understand what their role are towards this, the society, the people, then therefore their policing will become meaningless. They need to you know, engage the people, talk to the people. And I hope... Uh, uh, the senior management of the Gambia police, I hope they will come across this uh, um, conversation that we're doing. They should look into this. People I have been talking about that people, Sorry, I'm not being rude, but I just pray that people do share this video, this live. So share it as much as, as you can. Share it to anyone that you know, know someone very important in the Gambia that could be able to take action or might be able to forward it over to someone who is very powerful in the Gambia. Please keep sharing because you can never tell what this live can actually do. It may change a lot in the Gambia. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Ren, I want to, uh, I want to uh, say something. Uh, we are having a problem in our country, which is uh, Muslaha. We should stop this Muslaha. You understand? That's the one which is, I don't know, destroying us. Because people will do deliberate things, you understand? Then they will say it. They will say that let's musla it, let's talk to each other, and uh, we, we, we settle it in a friendly Absolutely. manner. Absolutely. You understand? I, I, think, I think people are, are taking that as an advantage, you understand, to continue doing their atrocities, and nobody will account them for that. You understand? That should be, that should, they should stop that. Because if not, you understand, these things will continue. We will keep on crying every day and night. You understand? They have to stop this muslaha. Dafadoi. Absolutely. It's, it's okay. Enough is enough. You understand? Then uh, 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 they are telling us that we should not take the law in our hand. But if they are not doing anything to protect us, what are the citizens going to do? What are we going to do? They are not giving us any choice just to defend ourselves. So uh, I, I think uh, they have to do something because uh, uh, as you say, Halal, we are in 24th century. You understand still now, 
you, it seems that you know we are not moving at anywhere. We are still standing. No changes. The laws are there. Gambia have the best laws in the world, but they are not implementing them. Because if if if, if anybody commit a crime, you want to arrest him, then everybody will come out. They will tell you that you understand. You need more like you understand. Let, let, let's settle the matter here. So when is that going to continue? Mm -hmm. When is that yeah. going to continue? And I quite agree so with I you think because they have to do something uh, help us a lot. The, 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 the government have to invest in security. That is paramount. That should be their first priority. Security. If a, if a country is not secure, you understand, then how can you invite investors to come and invest in that country? Yeah, that's true. Because so, um, I, I, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, um, Sister Rene mentioned in her uh, video that on the Jammeh, you can say whatever you want to say about Jammeh, but on the Jammeh, there were protection. Gambians were secure in their homes because he had a zero tolerance policy for crimes, especially against our women. And we have seen from 2016 to date, crimes are increasing in the Gambia. You know, robberies, breaking, so many things are increasing in the Gambia. Even accidents, it's like, you know, there is no control. Um, just a few days ago, my, my elder brother's son got hit by a driver and that car is not even insured. Yeah, the boy spent, you know, four days in RVTH and yeah, he got yeah. released yesterday. So like yeah. you said, so, so many Gambians are dying even out of you know, just traffic accidents. And we have police in our system. There are traffic rules, there are uh, 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 speed limits in our towns, but none of these laws are enforced. Police officers just turn a blind eye Drivers do what they want to do. They kill people recklessly. And once they kill people, like you said, they go into this Moslaha syndrome. They want to negotiate. But that life is already lost. We can never recover that life back. So we have a serious problem when it comes to implementing laws in our country. And the primary responsibility of the police department is to protect life and property in the Gambia. And one of their job is making sure that we have a safe traffic system in the Gambia and also to make sure that people are protected but they are not doing any of this and unless we start talking and not only talking I'm so happy that the people of Tanji decided to protest to show the government that we are angry we are not going to sit by and, and see this thing happening again and I hope and pray that the government of the Gambia will listen to the cries of our people especially those in Tanji and come to their aid because unless they do that we are not going to you know, have peace because if the people are not secure in their homes, then that defeats development in our country because we can move forward as a country if there is no security, like you said. That, 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 that's the truth. Uh, you know, well, uh, we, we are having a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, problems in the Gambia which they have to uh, find a solution to it. You cannot just jump, you understand, and give, or uh, most of the driving, uh, the drivers in the Gambia, they don't have driving license. You understand? Uh, most of them, they don't go to driving schools. Yeah. You understand? They are driving, they are recklessly killing innocent people. Just four days back, five people have just lost their life like that in a car accident in Fony. Yeah, that's happened in Bese. In Bese. No, 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 in, 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 in Fony. That happened. In Fony, better, yeah. I'm from there. My boy was driving that car to take the people on the hospital in Bese. Fony. Oh, it's serious. It's serious. But uh, I think what you have said now, uh, I, I hope they are watching. And, and they, they have five listening. people instant dead. We, we are not asking, you understand, uh, anything from them any big thing, but they have to play their part to secure us, you understand, and play, play their, uh, to yeah, do yeah. their responsibility, you understand, that is to protect the citizens, that's our right, that's why we are paying our taxes.
<laughs> so they cannot uh, put a blind a blind a blind eye on that uh, think that everything is okay in time uh, in Gambia. Things are yeah. wrong in Gambia. So this is what I have to say. Thank you so much. And I will be here listening to people who are coming. Rain Marcos, you are my good sister. Thank you very <laughs> much. You since since you are in Gambia, your first holiday. Oh, okay, the last oh, holiday. Thank you. you. Uh, halal also. I love all your programs and your videos, and I really appreciate all of you, especially all the YouTubers. You understand from Gambia and the diasporans who are going back to Gambia also. Uh, I appreciate all of you because you are doing a tremendous job. You understand behind the scenes and in front of everybody we don't know but the impact you are making all of you don't know but you will be remembered forever and i am i'm supporting you people and i'm telling you people to continue what you are doing let nobody stop us let nobody silence us then it is our right each and every one of us to contribute our quota for the nation building and to bring changes in our country i think through this kind of platforms, many things can be done. You know, understand, many things can change in our country. And I thank you, all of you, and stay blessed and happy new year to all of you. Thank you, the same as thank, well. thank thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you, brother. It's good to have you. And, and this is all what we're asking for from our Gambian people, just to show us this love and the support. It's not just about the money that you give, but uh, the words of encouragement that you give us goes a long way. To help us and then i hope and pray that we the content creators also will continue to do this because we're doing this out of love for our country we could be in 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 europe america stay comfortable lives and then just ignore the gambia but we cannot do that because whatever goes wrong in the gambia affects us because every day that i wake up i watch gambian music i watch gambian uh, uh tv everything about gambia i get glued to my phone. I'm always watching things happening in the Gambia and I wish I can do more for my country. These are some of the you know, little things that we can do to make sure that we help each other, to enlighten each other, so that we can make the Gambia a better place. Absolutely. We can. Thank you so very much, Alna, for being part of this live today. I truly appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. <sighs> right. And um, Rene, so I, I don't know, what do you think also, because um, we've talked about the issue of the police, you know, what they are not doing. Um, what also do you think we can do as a government? Because I mentioned earlier that we cannot entirely blame also the government, uh, the police department. Some of these police officers are very good. They're doing a lot of good job but no one can do your job if we are not fully funded if you don't get the materials you don't get the equipment you, that you need because you go to some of these police stations they don't have a car and even when they have a car sometimes they don't have fuel to you know use these cars and also we have to look at look into how much are our police paid they are not motivated at all and these police officers have families that they need to feed I don't know whether you have an idea as to how much a police officer is paid, but I bet they're making less than $75 a month. And we know the living standard in the Gambia is very expensive. And how do you expect a family person who is in the police force to sustain his or her family on less than $75 a month? So this, all of these things you know, plays into why we are having a very bad policing in the Gambia. Because if the police are not motivated, they are not going to do a good job. So I that, think... That's not just the police. That's anywhere you go, in any single job. If you're not motivated, you won't be able to do your job properly. So you're absolutely right. There must be something we can do to actually help motivate these police officers. So either we have to basically reach out to the government once we're in the country, or maybe 
do a petition. I don't know, but I'm sure us as YouTubers, as um, diasporans, there's something we can do as Gambians in the diaspora. I'm sure we can come together and come up with an idea to basically change things in the country. Because just like you mentioned, we can't blame the government all the time. We can't depend on the government all the time. There are things that we have to take the step before the government can actually take action. So that's how I see it. And I'm sure there's something we can do. We can sit and talk about it and then implement something and present it to the government or try and do something. Absolutely, I quite agree with you. And I think also the other challenge that we have in the Gambia is people are not joining the security services out of passion or out of love. We have to understand that serving one's country is, is honorable. But in the Gambia, for many of our youths, they join the services because they have no option. They have no choice. They just want to join the service to make the money and then that's it. And once you have such a mentality, you go into the security force, you are not going to do your job genuinely because your main focus is how do I make money? And if there is anybody who is thinking of going into the services and you're thinking of just making money, I think perhaps the services might not be the right place for you because we want people who will go into the services, who have passion, who have love for country, they're willing to sacrifice their life to serve the people because that is the only way, that is the only thing that can carry you, not the salary because the salary that we have in the Gambia is not gonna take you anywhere. And this is why we are having a lot of corruption within our services today because people think when they join the police, when they join the military, they join the immigration, they can easily make money overnight. And, and, and we see what that is leading us to. In the Gambia now, you can easily commit a crime. Once you have money, you can easily get away with it. Because when the police, you have an interaction with the police, you saw the money, most likely they're gonna take the money and let you go. We have had incidences about those things over and over and again. And, and even perhaps you, you, you drive in the traffic, you see what is happening. Our police officers are begging people for money, for fist money. Which other country do you go to? You see that is happening. In Senegal, our next, uh, next door neighbor, you hardly see that happening. And I don't entirely blame the police officers doing that. I believe we have a, a fundamental problem when it comes to our security sector itself. And from 2016 to now, when the change of government came in, what people were yearning for and still yearning for is to see security sector reform and up till today nothing has taken place it's like that hope that we had in this new government is fading away we want to see a different government because we in 2016 just voting out the former president and leaving the same system in place is not going to help the Gambia. this is why nothing is improving so we need a structural reform that government was taken out because we wanted change but there's no change i think the country is actually getting worse absolutely we're trying to heal but we can't heal if we're still struggling there's no point and i think it's about time we do something because the talking is too much now we need actions absolutely that's what i think that's what we need to do yeah. I think that's everything from me. Do you have yeah. any other message that you want to send out here? Um, my final message would be try, please, let's support the young man Cherno. Um, sorry, is it Famara? Famara, yes. Yes, yeah. let's try and support the young man so that he can um, go on with his life. Now that we all know he's an orphan, his father is late, um, his mom is... Uh, also late as a result of this um, unfortunate incident. So we should try to help them, help him as much as we can. And with that, Rene, I want to say thank you very much for what you've been doing. Please continue to help out using your platform, the right course, and let nobody um, um, discourage you from doing that. Um, whatever good endeavor that you have in life, there will always be, you know, detractors people would come to try to 
discourage you from doing whatever you're doing. But keep up the good fight. You have the blessings and the prayers of the Gambian people. If you can, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. Bye. Goodbye. Right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. I truly, truly appreciate your time and love and support. Thank you so very much. I know that it's New Year's and we all should be celebrating, you know, having so much fun. But my heart was so heavy and I was like, why have so much fun with my family? When I know that there's a child out there that needs more love than I do right now because he's lost his mom. He's lost his dad. It's just him in this lonely world. And we all know how cruel this, this world is. And the fact that his mom has gone so soon and which was not the best way for her to go. And no one wished to basically die the way that she was actually killed. So um, it was a last minute life. And I truly appreciate the fact that people actually came out to watch and support. And thank you so much for everyone that has actually supported with the um, super chats. Thank you so much. I promise the money will definitely go onto his GoFundMe once I receive it from my YouTube pay. Definitely it will go on it. And I will definitely create the GoFundMe. I'll try my best and do it tonight and post it so you guys can go ahead and support. But at the meantime, you can still support him on the PayPal account. And he's got... Um, Madhu has actually got all the details, so he will be the one monitoring all farmers' accounts as he is still too young. So thank you so very much. Madhu's um, WhatsApp number is actually in the description box, so you guys are more than welcome to contact him directly. That directly, you don't have to contact me directly unless you wish to, but you can direct uh, contact them directly to speak to them to basically ask them whatever question you want to ask them. Farmara can't speak English fluently as he dropped out of school at the age of between 11 and 12. So that's why we had the cousin to basically help the translation and uh, because he was very emotional when I spoke to him over the phone. So uh, Madhu was doing the, the talking more than Farmara was, just like he was um, in the live. So I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much to Zandela. If you guys have not... Um, checked her channel, Zandela's Journey, please do, because she's doing amazingly well. She's also another Gambian princess, so please do that. Thank you so very much for all the love and support. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, guys, and I love you all. Thank you so much. Goodbye. And Happy New Year as well. <laughs>